<laughs> in today's video, I'm going to be talking to you about what people are looking for exactly in a pet portrait. So this goes for all pets and all mediums. Okay, let's get started. Hey guys, Larn here with Larn Elizabeth Fine Art and I help the beginner through professional level artists reduce stress while mastering the art of animal art. All right, so this does vary from person to person. It's probably no surprise that some people like super realistic art, uh, photograph looking art, and then some people like really abstract art. Some people like dark colors, some people like vibrant pastel looking colors. It, it just depends on that person. But in the past five years that I've been a artist and just some of the research that I've done myself, there's five things that people are really looking for when they're coming to an artist for a pet portrait. And the first one is quality. They are looking for a quality pet portrait that they can hang on their walls for many years to come. So that means something that it has a finish on it. It's gonna protect it for many years to come. Um, the, I, I never ever ship off a painting that doesn't have one or two coats of a gloss or mate finish over my acrylic paintings. The other thing to think about is the, do you have, if you have a siding on your pet portrait, so if you have an inch to a half inch siding on your canvas, is that covered or is that bare? Do you have gobs of paint um, in areas that, they, that doesn't belong there? Are you painting a horse in the background but they ask for a dog portrait, a, just a dog portrait? Even if it takes you a while, and that's okay, every artist works at a different pace, they have different styles, they have different methods, give what you are promising. People are also looking for style. So they find you based on your style. They, that's how as artists we want to be different. We want to stand out. We want to be unique. We don't want our paintings to look like anyone else's. We want them to look like how we paint. The people that have come to me for my art is because they want vibrant, colorful, alive acrylic pet portraits. They like that style. Some people don't. Some people want really realistic pet portraits. Now sometimes artists feel overwhelmed because they still don't have their style or their style is just evolved so much they're not they're still unsure about what their style is and that's okay. Just have a goal. Have a goal of where you want to be in a year from now, where you want to be in five years from now in your art. And that's where you should start heading towards. You can still be selling pet portraits. You can still be getting the commissions that you want now. Even if you're not quite fine, if you haven't quite fine tuned your style, that is quite all right. And even once you have created your style, like, like me, I'm still evolving. I'm still growing as an artist. That will never stop. All right, point number three is the third most important thing to have in your pet portrait is personality. Now we talked about your personality going into your pet portrait, but you want to really focus on putting the animal's personality into your pet portrait. So through your pet portrait process, whether you do that through phone or email, like I do, you really want to pull out the details from that client. So this is one of my favorite parts about being a pet portrait artist. I get to learn more about that client. I get to learn a lot about their pet and I get to give them something that is they cherish, that they love because these are their babies. We're, we're painting their babies. So I simply ask, can you give me a little bit of a background and the story behind your pet? And nine out of 10 times they will go into real full detail. Speaking of babies, they will go into real full detail about their pet. And so you want to capture in your painting or your drawing their favorite ball or their favorite expression or their favorite uh, blanket. What about that pet just really stands out and something that that client cherishes and makes them laugh or cry or it just is that animal. And just like humans, our babies, our pets have such unique personalities. Okay, point number four is experience. And there's actually two parts to this. I experience as in how experienced you are as a, an artist. So in your skill, using your medium, using just the, the products that you're using, how experienced are you, you, you using them? Um, and then also experience as a professional, as an entrepreneur, as somebody who is a servant. 
I honestly think the best thing you can do for your client, your customer, is just give your all. Give the best that you can and be professional about it. They want to know that you can follow through, that you can give them what you're promising, that you will give your all, and that you will really just try your best to create what they came to you for. And you can show that through your website. If you don't have a website, you can show that through a Facebook group. If you don't have a Facebook group, you can show that in social media, Instagram. However you are setting up your portfolio, that is everything. That portfolio that you're showing, however you have that and you're promoting that, um, the thing that has really helped me is a photo of that pet next to its pet portrait. I mean, that is really a huge selling point for people who are trying to get more commissions. Uh, reviews. You can show your experience by posting progress photos, final photos, uh, just sharing what you learned from a pet portrait. Showing that growth on in whatever way that you are marketing your pet portraits is a great way to bring in people to you. Alright guys, last point. Point number five is the price point. <laughs> I have struggled with this myself. This is something that I think a lot of those non-greedy creatives are so non-greedy. I feel like I've worked with so many and they're just such passionate, sensitive, loving people who are just not in it for the money, but they're, they're really just trying to express themselves. And anyway, I, uh, oftentimes I have seen artists, including myself, price too low. And so be smart about how you're pricing your work and one, uh, my mentor gave me this advice and it's common sense, but it helped me so much. Even if you price your artwork uh, too high or a little too low, that's okay. Over time, it'll eventually lead to the right decision. You just gotta make a decision. You just gotta go for it. Find an artist with a similar or around the same skill level as you, price your work around there, and just go for it. And every year I raise my prices. I don't raise it a ton, but I am raising my prices because what people are paying for now is five years of experience. They're not paying for a few hours of experience. They are paying for many, many, many hours that I have put in um, over the years of, of just improving my art. And so that's how you should too. So don't overprice, don't underprice. But, but stand strong in your decision. You gotta make that decision and you'll learn from it, okay? And, and you learn as you go. I, I feel like so many artists um, are so afraid to make mistakes. They are afraid to take risks. That's something that I, I think has helped me. I'm so okay with taking risks. I'm so okay with making mistakes. My students know how many mistakes I've made, how many things I have just tried and it didn't work out, so I try again. I learn from my mistakes, I learn and I move on. So don't get held up on the little details like price point, but just try to make the wisest decision based off what you've seen and the own research you've done about other artists. Meow would like to join us. So guys, I go real in depth into this in my book that I'm working on that is coming out on May 1st. It goes over all the things that I've learned about the art and business of pet and, life, uh, pet and wildlife portraiture. Um, I talk about my story. I talk about what in, what led me to becoming an artist. I talk about how I overcame the trials in this business and also leading up to it with addiction and depression and anxiety. I'm spilling my guts in this book, guys. I It's been a challenge because it's just really been quite therapeutic for me. I'm, I'm opening up about many, many experiences that I've had in my life. So I, and it's sharing all the things that I really wish I had heard and learned before going into this business and all the things that I really wish I knew so that I would not make as many mistakes as I had made um, and learn the hard way. Now, if you're interested in the book and you want to get more details, I have a link down below where you can enter your information in and I will just keep you updated until May 1st. I also am giving away some of these tips and tricks and just insights from my book and my masterclass if you are also interested in the masterclass. Students um, from the Maine Coon Up tier get this full download. Once my book is done, they get the full book and it's a part of the um, 
the membership. But as usual, you are welcome to ask me any questions. Leave them in the comment section down below and I will respond as quickly as I can. I really try to just be a servant in this field and just help you and my students as best I can while being a mama and being a wife and being an artist, a commissioning artist myself. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I just thoroughly enjoy talking about this topic and just helping you in the way that I was designed to. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next video, maybe a tutorial, I'm not quite sure yet. All right, guys, bye.